Hi, I'm Matt Damsel. I'm the writer, director, editor, and I play Grant in Follow the Ash Borer. <laughs> An ash borer? <laughs> Good question. Uh, the ash, the emerald ash borer is this bug that's been infesting the, the Michigan wooded areas, um, and it's basically depriving the woods of the ash trees because they leave, as we discuss in the film, these squiggly maze lines of the tree that eventually killed the tree and it's become a real issue and uh, we try to use that as a metaphor more than anything in the film. Follow the Ash Borer at its core is a family drama. Um, it has a few elements of sci-fi as you'll come to see. It's all about this trio of siblings supporting each other through financial hardship and mental illness. And when things go bad how much is it really worth to try to salvage what little you have? Uh, it's it's a film uh, really about your own perception. Uh, it's a film that that it's a film that plays with the audience's perception. We don't know which brother is the oldest. Uh, we don't know necessarily what happened to this family's parents. Um, y I, you'll have to wait and see. But, you know, we'll learn maybe a little bit more about that sci-fi element, but it's, it's a lot about perception. Follow the Ash Borer went through probably three different rewrites um, within the last three years. It's embarrassing to say how long this took. It wasn't, it wasn't all in one course of like, like three full years of working on this. There, there were times we took breaks and decided on different things. Originally the script was very different, things turned out way differently, um, but with the help of uh, my creative consultant and uh, acting partner, uh, Todd Calvin DePew, we came up with, uh, I think, a richer story. Yes! <laughs> the characters, um, actually, Jackie is a key character in this film. Um, this film centers a a lot around her at parts, um, and I actually wrote her with myself in mind, believe it or not. I'm the furthest thing from Grant. I'm actually closer to what Jackie is. I've suffered through uh, a lot of um, OCD and, you know, mental issues, paranoia, things like that. Uh, probably not to the degree that I portray her in the film. I've really enhanced it for her, but I have been there and I know what she's going through and Oddly enough, I wrote her as a reflection of myself. Grant. Grant is one sibling of the trio. He is, um, he's kind of a condescending brother. He's, he's not really the brother you like at the beginning of the film, I'll say that. Where that goes, we'll leave for you to see. Um, but he's a little bit controlling. So while his brother Paul tries to put himself in other people's shoes and sympathize with them, Grant just kind of sees the world through his own eyes. And when Jackie comes to him with her mental issues, her OCD, Grant just thinks it's something she could just turn off, like a switch, and that, that's not how it works. But he thinks he, he knows the world better than his siblings do. And because of that, he doesn't, maybe doesn't treat them with the amount of respect that he should. <laughs> before, before production, pre-production, was, was, and a lot of times it was fun, a lot of times it was pure mental blockage. <laughs> During production, uh, I want to say it was, it was enlightening. <laughs> it was, it was very fun. It was actually very frustrating at times. Uh, we <laughs> there are so many shots that we had to redo and redo and redo because a lot of it was improv. Uh, we made sure that made sense for the story, but that improv didn't always work. <laughs> Takes had to go into the hours and hours and a lot of reshoots as well. Um, dr actors dropping, and having to switch it up. We uh, Jackie, I believe we had three actresses in line to play her at one point. Both of them uh, had other obligations, so I'm really happy with where we ended up. Post-production? Post-production <laughs> has been a royal bitch. <laughs> so, 
I think next time, for, for the next film I do, I'm going to have more of a crew uh, doing doing the, the editing, the music, the ADR. It's a lot of work, that's all I'll say. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau is the room. <laughs> <laughs> If I can make, if this movie gets as successful as that, I'll take the bad ratings. <laughs> no, um, a lot of it, uh, I had, um, I had signs in mind a lot. I love signs. Signs is one of my big, uh, inspirations film-wise. Uh, I'm a big sci-fi enthusiast. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm a big sci-fi enthusiast, and the thing about signs was how kind of, like it's quiet of a film it was it was a very it was a very slow burn kind of film but it, it every second kept me engaged and the family was at the core you cared about the people more than the sci-fi the action that's what i kind of wanted to mimic in, in a different way but yeah i learned not to do it all myself <laughs> Short and sweet. Okay, leave it at that. Short and sweet. Damsel, everyone. That's short and sweet. Leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Mysterious. Heartfelt. And. Cheap. <laughs> That's great. I want to use that. <laughs> No. <laughs> um and dramatic. Bare minimum pictures is uh a secret society. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's uh it's a production team composed of myself, Todd Calvin DePew, and Jacob Ferriance, who are like my brothers, and we all met actually in an acting class a few years back. Um and we just instantly clicked. I don't know why, because in looking at the three of us, it doesn't make sense that we're friends <laughs> personality-wise, but somehow it works, and I love them to death. Um, and we have this idea, because we, we're not rich. We don't have money. We, we decided we're going to try to make the best product possible with the m least amount of money. That's where bare minimum comes in. And I think we're, you're always going to get a top-notch product, probably what looks like has a higher budget than it does. I dedicate this film to my brothers, Calvin and Jacob, for sure, for one. Morgan, excellent job. I dedicate this to the state of Michigan, who's really been hit hard by this ash borer infestation. I go to a campground every summer and it's terrible to see these forests just shrinking every time I go there. I also want to dedicate it to my cousin David who's been my brother since we were born and we have a similar kind of relationship to Paul and Grant where we're, we were at each other's throats one day and the next day we're like nothing happened. Um, anybody who's struggled with mental illness, anybody whose family doesn't quite understand them, and to myself, because I've been where these people are in certain instances, and I just want it to resonate with those people and myself. If I'm not, if I don't feel anything when I watch it, I don't think it's worth showing. <laughs>